huge decision here. I'm just reading this as it comes in, and I don't like to get political on this show, aside from a snide remark here and there. Uh, Huge decision, though, from the Ohio Supreme Court. Headline is, chicken wings advertised as boneless can have bones. Ohio Supreme Court decides. Why? Well, let me read. Uh, Consumers cannot expect boneless chicken wings to actually be free of bones. A divided Ohio Supreme Court ruled Thursday, rejecting claims by a restaurant patron who suffered serious medical complications from getting a bone stuck in his throat. I sued the restaurant that the restaurant failed to warn him that so-called boneless wings, which are, of course, nuggets of boneless, skinless breast meat, could contain bones. In a 4-3 ruling, the Supreme Court said Thursday that boneless wings refers to a cooking style and that the uh, complainant should have been on guard against bones since it's common knowledge that chickens have bones. Hmm. The dissenting justices called the reasoning from the, this is what the Supreme, this is what the majority wrote. Justice Joseph Dieters wrote, A diner reading boneless wings on a menu would no more believe that the restaurant was warranting the absence of bones in the items than believe that the items were made from chicken wings, just as a person eating chicken fingers would know that he had not been served fingers. The dissenting justices called Dieter's reasoning utter jabberwocky (laughs) and said a jury should have been allowed to decide whether the restaurant was negligent in serving a piece of chicken that was advertised as boneless. The question must be asked, does anyone really believe that the parents in this country who feed their young children boneless wings or chicken tenders or chicken nuggets or chicken fingers expect bones to be in the chicken. Of course they don't, just as Michael P. Donnelly wrote in the dissent. When they read the word boneless, they think it means without bones, as do all sensible people. (laughs) They ain't got nothing better to do in Ohio. I cannot believe that the majority ruled in favor of boneless wings having bones. Or having the ability to have a bone. Right. But they're right. They are. Who's right? The majority. If I go to the supermarket and I purchase seedless oranges, Mm -hmm. a sensible person would know that there is a possibility that there could still be a seed in the orange. Even if it's Even the titled water- seedless? The seedless watermelons have the little white seeds. They're not the big hard black seeds, but they have the little white seeds. You're telling me that a reasonable person expects boneless wings to have bones? Not expects but should always be on guard. Mm -hmm. I disagree. You've never purchased a boneless chicken breast from Publix. And uh, when you cut into a piece, you notice there's there's a piece of bone. But it doesn't say boneless chicken breast. It'll say chicken filet or chicken cutlet, or you could get chicken on the bone. But it doesn't say say boneless chicken breast. Absolutely, it does. I buy bone. I buy two packs of boneless chicken breasts every single week from Publix for the past six years of my life. Like pre-made now- ones? No, raw, boneless chicken breasts. Yeah, they don't say boneless. Yeah, I think they do. Yes, they do. Nah, they- 
Yeah, yeah they do. Because yeah. they say boneless because boneless, skinless. Because they take the skin off of them, too. Yeah, boneless. See, if you buy, a, if you buy a, a filet of steak, it doesn't say boneless filet. Yeah, but it says bone-in ribeye. Right. Mm -hmm. It tells you if the bone is in. And by the way, jumping on the back of what the Supreme Court ruled there in Ohio, fair to assume then that if you order a bone-in ribeye and there is no bone, hey, you got to uh, assume sometimes there is no bone. <laughs> no, for safety purposes. And who swallows chicken nuggets like, like Tylenol? Aren't you going to chew it up and feel the bone in your mouth? Well, when you bite into it and you're chewing and you're swallowing, you're not expecting something to be in there. And all of a sudden, a bone is caught in your throat. And you go, well, that's impossible because I ordered the boneless wings. But as you chew it, you don't feel a crunch, a crunch. For sure. Right. You think it's the breading. Because you've been told there's no bone. <laughs> but again, it's it's not it's not unreasonable when sure it eating a bird. It's utter jabberwocky. <laughs> That you would find a bone in chicken. It's like fish. But that's fish why you bone. order the boneless ones when you don't want to have the bone in the chicken. Correct. And it's why I buy the seedless oranges. But Literally, I still... society breaks down if I can order boneless chicken wings and they can throw bones in there. But chicken wing places also say world famous or best in the world. And I bid them be like, this isn't the best chicken wing in the world. But that's subjective. A bone is not subjective. It's objective. There's either a bone in there or there's not. You know how they cut it. No, there's either a bone in there or there's not. Keep your guard up. Certainly in Ohio. The real issue at hand. Was that loser ordering boneless wings? I think that was was really a the majority ruled in in I, in favor of the restaurant because they're I all imagine, in favor of that guy being a loser. I imagine had they ruled the other way, we would have seen the end of boneless chicken wings. Because if the Supreme Court ruled that you could not in any circumstance have a bone in a boneless chicken wing. I think restaurants would have had to do away with boneless chicken wings. Not Why? worth the risk. Why? Because it wouldn't be worth the risk of calling them boneless. Correct. Because yeah. it's pretty ordinary that you'll find a piece of bone in a boneless chicken breast. It's ordinary? Yeah, yeah bone I would say it went to the Supreme Court. It was so out of the ordinary. Not a full bone, a little bone shard. Yeah. You think it's ordinary to have bones in boneless chicken wings? Perhaps ordinary wasn't the right word, but I, I, I wouldn't be. What's that word they used? Surprised. <laughs> Goobawockied. Yeah, goobawockied. I wouldn't be goobawockied. <laughs> well, no, it was called utter jabberwocky. No one oh, would be jabberwockied. Well, I wouldn't be jabberwockied. Well, you couldn't. If I but bit into. Or but. <laughs> A Past boneless it. chicken breast, <laughs> and there Past was a shard, it. a shard of bone in it. I wouldn't be that surprised. It's happened to me several times. Oh, has has, yeah, it's happened to me several times. Uh, well, I wouldn't keep getting the boneless chicken wings at that restaurant. I mean, <laughs> fair when Crowder ordered a uh, uh, pan that there was a roach pressed into it. Fair to assume that there shouldn't be one, or Hey, it's a restaurant. There's roaches, and there might be one pressed into the bread. No, because bread doesn't, you know, bread's not naturally paired with roaches. Chicken's well, paired with bones. That's utter jabberwocky. <laughs> well, based on your reaction to that entire situation, Crowder, it seemed like you you weren't jabberwocky at all either. Because <laughs> How have you turned <laughs> that into a verb? You just... <laughs> You stayed around. You ate the flan afterwards. Because I already ordered a full meal. And once you've gotten the roach in your bread, what are the odds you're going to get a roach in anything else? Oh, Slim to none. <laughs> the the masas de puerco was delicious. <laughs> I did. I regret eating that flan, though.
and say it's a win for the good guys. Way to go, Ohio Supreme Court. That is a ridiculous decision. And if that doesn't get you, you know, motivated to go out and vote in November, nothing will. You know, the ticket wizard, of course, is very involved in the law. An attorney. He was Jimmy's representation at traffic court. He's outraged by this Ohio Supreme Court decision. And he said, that was like the time I went to the breakers. I ordered a turkey club. It wasn't even close to what a normal club sandwich is. So when I called the waitress over, she looked at me and she said, that's our take on a club sandwich. And he's like, you can't just decide on your own unilaterally what a, cl a club sandwich is. We all know what a club sandwich is. And he's right. If you advertise something as boneless, it should be sans bones. If you have a club sandwich on the menu, well, what's in a club sandwich? You got the sliced uh, turkey meat, say, mm. tomato, lettuce, bacon on toast, right? Cheese. That's a club sandwich. Yeah. You well, can't. A Cuban, a Cuban sandwich is different than Miami and Tampa. Correct. But a club sandwich is ubiquitous the nation over. <laughs> Not at the breakers. And he's right. That should be illegal. <laughs> you should not be able to call a club sandwich. If you order, if you see on the menu a club sandwich. Yes. And they bring over meatloaf on a ciabatta. <laughs> what club is this? They go, this is our club sandwich. Do you have a right to be angry? I should have read the ingredients, Barry. But it doesn't say the ingredients. It just says club sandwich. Breaker's famous club sandwich. <laughs> I think the best one is seedless watermelon. Plus, that's arbitrary. Like, the word club could really mean anything. Because you huh. could think it's your club sandwich. I could think it's the, the 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 specific club that I'm at, their club sandwich. Somebody could think it's a legitimate golf club in between two slices of bread. Like it's it's totally arbitrary. Correct. But it's understood. Society breaks down. <laughs> if you go to McDonald's and order a Big Mac, and this particular McDonald's gives you a chicken sandwich. And they say, that's what we call a Big Mac. You're okay with that? Okay, but that's their argument. Well, no, because I know where I'm going to a restaurant, and this said restaurant has a menu. And their menu should not vary from chain to chain. Nor should a club sandwich. Did he eat it? I don't know. I mean, you've seen yeah, Barry. Yeah. I would imagine. My guess <laughs> yeah. with that. Probably had a little lava cake for dessert. My my money's <laughs> on. He ordered another one. <laughs> and let me tell you, if he was at the Breakers, it was six hundred and sixty-four dollars. <laughs> Is that place good? I've never been to the break. Everybody talks about the 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 brunch at the Breakers. The brunch at the breakers. Yeah, I mean that's one of the nicest properties in all of South Florida. Yeah, it's it's beautiful, nice. The rooms are amazing. The service is crazy. It's right on the water. But yeah, you're gonna you you might go bankrupt if you stay two three days. And they have terrible club sandwiches. Shockingly, <laughs> pool's awesome. I'll give you an example. Go to uh, this local spot in Kendall by my house. I order takeout, or we go eat there every Friday night. It's called Tacos and Tattoos. Mm -hmm. And on their menu, they have fajitas. It's a Mexican Latino fusion. They have fajitas, so. Without reading the menu, I'm like, oh, I'm down for fajitas. I ordered fajitas. You're that guy, huh? I'm that guy. <laughs> I love fajitas. Fajita guy, huh? You got to make I'm, a big show with your dinner? I'm the fajita guy. Absolutely. Bring me that sizzling plate, baby. You get the pasta made in the cheese wheel when that's offered? Yeah, cacho y pepe, right in the cheese wheel. <laughs> that's, that's that's delicious. Table side Caesar? Mm -hmm. And table side guac, too. Don't bring right. me that guac from right, <laughs> right in the back of the kitchen. I want you to come make oh. it for me. You know what's worth the show is Bananas Foster when they put the fire right there oh, next to it. And... That's so good. That's one of the few exceptions I make for having fruit in dessert. Oh, bananas Foster is one of the few oh, exceptions. 
I don't even like the the lights and all when they bring you a bottle at the club, but you can set my dessert on fire any day. That's, That's how they should bottle. bring the bananas monster with the big <laughs> sign. <laughs> So go ahead. You you order the fajitas. What was it actually? And they have um, on their menu. They have all the ingredients. I didn't read it though. I just said I want fajitas. And usually fajitas comes on that skillet, sure. and it's chicken or steak or shrimp, whatever you ordered, with peppers, onions, sautéed everything together, sizzling on that plate. Well, at Tacos and Tattoos, their take on fajitas is French fries. Underneath the steak and the peppers and the onions, French fries, like a bed of French fries, also sizzling on the plate. And when it arrived, I thought I they made a mistake. Like, did you accidentally put? They did. A, they did a make a mistake. They called no. that fajitas. They they called that big uh, platter full of crap fajitas, and they should be out of business. <laughs> oh, how dare you? I love that plate. <laughs> They tacos put two things tattoos. together, boy. Tacos and tattoos. I've never said, let me get a tattoo. Oh, I love a taco. Well, let me tell you something. I eat, I ate it. Happened to be fire. Now, I go there every Friday. Fajitas with french fries. Right. Except that you're not having fajitas, just so you know. Those well, are I not am. fajitas. We all know what fajitas are. You're they not are. having fajitas there. They brought, me, they brought me the refried beans. They brought me the lettuce, the pico de gallo. They brought me the tortillas on the side. They brought me all the ingredients for fajitas. But their take on it was with French fries. But you can't have a take on something that's understood. If I decide I want to buy season tickets for the Hurricanes next season, so I go online and I buy season tickets for the Hurricanes. They send me one ticket for a game against FAMU. They go, this is our take on season tickets. One ticket to the FAMU game. I, I don't have a leg to stand on there. That's their take on it. I don't know if that's along the same line. Slippery slope, Solana. <laughs> hey, true story. You know, uh, Asia and myself, we got married at the Breakers. Mm -hmm. so, so we take our 90-year-old, Asia's 90-year-old grandmother. We got her a room at the Breakers so she can stay the weekend. We say, what do you want for breakfast? And she was like, I don't know, baby. You know, don't worry about me. So I, uh, Asia gives her the menu. The menu has the prices on it. She saw that cereal was $22 <laughs> and she didn't want to eat. She she was refusing to eat the rest of the weekend. She was like, no, nah, baby, this is, I, I'm not like, you got to be hungry, grandma. No, I'm not eating $20 cereal. There's no cereal in this world good enough to be $20. It was, yeah, high, high. I bet she wanted product 19. <laughs> it's a good old person cereal, product 19. <laughs> yeah. Live the 95, a bacon every morning. Somebody texts in, Hawk, you're arguing with a guy who wanted to bake a frozen chocolate cake. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give away these Marlins tickets because the 5 o'clock hour is next. 5 o'clock Funky Buddha happy hour, and you know how much fun that can be. So let's give away these Marlins tickets. Marlins have bark at the park. Now, the Marlins... Uh, vision of Bark in the Park, bring a bird. Because that's the way they envision it. It's not your typical <laughs> Bark at the Park. Any animal, turtles. Uh, so anything. Not anything goes. <laughs> <laughs> you mess up a club sandwich, society comes to an end. I mean, their take, their take at Bark at the Park <laughs> is uh, buy one, get one sodas. They call it Bark at the Park. That's their take on it. <laughs> the bases are made with French fries. Yeah, but that's the way they do it. <laughs> and literally, at 2 o'clock, my, that my two topics were, will Tua lead this team further, and has Justin Herbert been overrated? <laughs> Best laid plans. Cranked up. Anyway, tickets for Bark at the Park. It, it's with actual dogs. It's at Lone Depot Park. Marlins, Reds, August 5th. We will take caller number... 11. 11. 
305-567-0560. Caller number 11 gets the Marlins tickets. We will have one more pair to give away tomorrow on the Friday program. 5 o'clock, Funky Buddha Happy Hour is coming up next. And if you listened yesterday, you know that the 5 o'clock Funky Buddha Happy Hour can go off the rails, say the least. Oh, that's your take on it. I have a different take on it. 